Recently, AWS released EKS Distro, which allows you to run on-premises the same Kubernetes that is being run in EKS. And in this demo, what we're going to take a look at is running Istio across multiple different clusters, potentially on-prem and in a public cloud, and how to simplify the operations of, of doing that. And we're going to use Solo's Glue Mesh product, which is an enterprise distribution of Istio built on upstream with, for those who need it, FIPS compliant, ARM builds, that kind of stuff, that um, also simplifies the management of a service mesh across multiple clusters and, and even integrate with a provider specific service mesh. So again, Glue Mesh is based on Istio, is upstream Istio with these uh, additional capabilities for running and simplifying your service mesh operations. So in the demo, what we're gonna what we're gonna look at is a couple different clusters running Istio, one on-prem in EKSD and one in the public cloud in AWS EKS. And we're gonna use the management plane that comes with Glue Mesh to, to operate this. So if we come over here on the top pane, we see EKSD running locally. We see in the middle pane, we see EKS running in AWS. And then down here in the bottom pane, we see a cluster running the management plane. So let's run our quick demo. The first thing we're going to do is register our EKSD cluster with the management plane. And what this is going to do is give access to the management plane for this cluster, which then we should be able to come in and discover what is running on that cluster. So if we look at the different clusters we've registered, we see we discover an Istio running there. Now let's also register the EKS cluster running in AWS. And once we get that registered, we should see the same the same thing, we should see it pop up in our list of clusters. And actually, if we click on a particular cluster, let's click on this one, we should see it also discovers the traffic targets and workloads and any of the policies that we've applied to that, that particular mesh. So if we come back here, we should see our EKSD is uh, here and our EKS running in AWS has been discovered. If I click on meshes, we see the different service meshes and the various workloads running in those meshes. Now, across a large number of these clusters, some on-prem, some in AWS, maybe different VPCs, you know, it gets kind of difficult to manage the, the policies, the configurations, security, and so on. And what, you, what you'd like to do is just focus on what are the services that are involved in the communication paths and how do we secure those regardless of what cluster uh, they are running on. So to do that, with Glue Mesh, we have a concept called a virtual mesh. So we can specify which meshes belong to this unified virtual mesh and then write configuration specifically for the virtual mesh. And then Glue Mesh will go do the translation and orchestration of the configuration into the various clusters. But as an operator and user or SRE or development team, we don't have to know all the nuances and details about where these workloads are, are running. So if we apply this and come back to our, our UI, we'll watch as it starts to do its, its discovery and we should see the UI up, update in a second. Right now it thinks there are three because we have our two different Istio meshes plus the virtual mesh, but uh, eventually it will get to uh, one, as we can see here, because now it thinks about the system as a single virtual mesh made up of uh, different meshes. In this case, the two, one running in EKSD and the one running in EKS in, in AWS. If I click on virtual mesh details, it'll show me all of the different workloads, any of the policies uh, or failover rules that we've defined, which we haven't defined any yet. Um, and 
any of the WebAssembly extensions that we've um, that we've installed into some of the workloads. And we'll cover that one in a little more detail in a, in a different demo. If we come back to the CLI here, we see that we are restarting some of the workloads here because we want it to pick up the new certificates that were the glue mesh orchestrated. And so what this means is we're tying together the trust domains in these different clusters so that when they make a call from one cluster to the other, then we'll be able to uh, propagate the identity, establish mutual TLS end to end, uh, and then write policies about access control and so on based on that identity. So we'll give that a second to restart. If we come back um, over here, we should see, we might, we're gonna restart the, the gateways as well. Uh, just to speed up getting the um, the certificates, the new certificates provisioned. Otherwise, it takes a little while for for the rotation. And come over here. We should see the services restart. Now we see that it's uh, moving along here. Give it a second for these, these pods to come back online. Let's also check what's going on here in AWS. Those look, they look like they're almost there. Well, let's just re redo that one just to make sure everything's in, in good order. Now, now we want to route traffic between the clusters. And uh, let's first take a look at uh, the app that's running in the EKSD cluster product page. So there's a book info demo from Istio. If we refresh a couple of times, we should see that the, the response varies a little bit. It bounces back between reviews V1 and V2. And that's because the calls are staying local to the EKSD cluster. But what we want to do is we want to write some traffic rules that that explicitly tell the 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 you know the apps in cluster one in EKSD to route to reviews that's running in cluster two in in AWS in in the cloud. So let's actually apply this resource. And now instead of if I refresh, instead of bouncing back and forth between reviews v one and v two, we should see. In this case, we're specifically routing to reviews v three, which is in AWS. In, in this cluster. So if I refresh a couple of times, we'll give it a second. Well, 75% of the traffic, oh, there's the red stars, but for some reason, my internet connection might not be that, there we go. Okay, so if we refresh a couple of times, it should go and we should see the red stars. If we come look at, at our, our glue mesh, if we look at policies, we can see that indeed we did specify a virtual mesh configuration called the traffic policy. And we can see that the traffic has been distributed now to the second cluster. And so we're making an end-to-end -end connection from cluster one to cluster two um, and, and mutually, you know, the mutual TLS and identity propagation is happening there. So now that's all good. We explicitly set up the routing to do that, but let's define some failover policies so that if things don't work out the way we expect and a service in cluster one goes down that we can automatically fail over to cluster two instead of you know, explicitly doing it like we did with the traffic control. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna specify the passive health checking for all of our workloads and we need to do that to enable the failover functionality. So if we apply this, what this is gonna do is for all of the workloads is going to uh, create a new policy here that um, that if there are failures then eject that particular host out of the load balancing pool so that we can achieve the failover behavior that we want so now that we've defined the health checking let's look at the failover rules and what we're going to say here is uh, if a client talks to this particular host in the mesh that we will be able to fail over to the 
uh, review service running in AWS. So if the traffic is in EKSD locally and one of the review services starts to fail, then fail over to uh, the review service in AWS. So let's go ahead and apply that. Now that failover should show up in our um, uh, policies here. Nope, not that one. If we look at the, uh, the, the failovers, we see that there is now a, a failover policy set here. And now if we take down the review service in, v, in e, the EKSD cluster, so we're gonna cause it to fail here. And then if we, res, if we tail the logs in cluster two in AWS, we should see, here's our AWS cluster. We're gonna tail the logs. We should see if we refresh over here now, that all the traffic should be going to the review service running in cluster two in, in AWS. All right, so and you should see start to see some, I don't know why my internet is so slow right now. Um, but if the, if the call completes, we should start to see access logging happen in, uh, in this window here, which would indicate the requests are indeed going to the AWS cluster and failing over. So let's see what's going on here. Maybe the port forwarding is having some trouble. Let's go here, refresh. There we go, we see traffic and we can see here in in this window that indeed traffic is has failed over and is going into the EKS cluster in AWS. So that's just a little sneak peek of uh, what Glue Mesh can do. Um, if we go to, let's see, I think it's Glue Mesh. If we go to a, a management plane that has uh, a little bit more functionality, we can we can take a look at. Uh, you know, in this case, we we do have a another mesh that in this case is OSM. Um, we could also. A bridge in or extend that virtual mesh capability out to AWS app mesh. We can deploy WebAssembly modules to the different uh, clusters that affect and make, you know, customize the behavior of our service mesh. And if we need to, we can go into each of the clusters, each of the meshes, and see the the specific Istio resources that have been created, from virtual services to the destination rules and uh, any of the Envoy filters. And, and so on. So I definitely recommend you take a look at EKSD. And if you're looking to run Istio in an enterprise supported way across these multiple clusters, simplify the operations, then definitely take a look at Glue Mesh from Solo. Thanks and be sure to check out our YouTube channel. So if we go to YouTube, Solo, uh, there's a lot of content on Envoy Proxy and Click on videos here, um, Envoy Proxy and Istio and Service Mesh and um, you know, building up this application networking infrastructure. And more importantly, how do you operate and simplify it using best practices, using tooling, using uh, the right open source projects. So definitely take a look and, uh, and stay tuned to more demos.